If I told you why I haven't made any progress today, you wouldn't believe me. Well, you might if you've seen the most recent Farm Friday. So I've straightened out all of these rafters. I've got one all plumbed up and then I've kind of clamped and turned the others to make sure they're in. Uh, and they're all nice and plumb that way. They were just a twisted bunch, I think. I've then run in 200 mil screws down in, through each purlin into the rafters. So that should hold them all plumb as well. That just avoids the need to put any blocking between them on the way up because if we do that then we have cold spots and cold bridging so uh, that's worked out okay now we just need to make sure that we're ready for the insulation on the inside but more importantly what the priority is today is to get the fascia boards on here we're going with the timber fascia it's going to be 170 millimeters which is how they've come craig's just cut a load of uh, the bracing that we had left from the trusses they sent too much so although they could do with being taller He's cut these sections here, which fixed to the side of each of these um, trusses up here should bring us down and equal what we've got down there. And then our face should screw, uh, screw into these as can the soffit. So on the inside now, when we look back up at all these rafters, they're far more plumb than they were before. It wasn't aesthetics. We knew the roof line was gonna be fine. It was all to do with getting the insulation in because we're using a rigid insulation board out there. Uh, up there, it just means that if they were slightly off, slightly twisted, it would just throw it all even with the tape. So the first job after lunch is gonna be to get a coat of paint on the fascia boards. Right, I am on ladders now. Not actual ladders, building ladders. This what I've got, it's an absolute mess in here, sorry. I've got same timbers we're using for the purlins on top, which says 75 mil by 50 mil treated. And this is exactly what Tom did last time, I just didn't get to film it. This is our 12 and a half degree pitch. So that's the pitch of, or the, the apex of the roof. And then we've got a block here. They're 250 mil, which will create our overhang. And I'm doing them every 600 mil all the way down to the bottom, which will meet our fascia board. So that's kind of the easy bit done, building them. But now I've got to get them up. Fortunately, because they're not trusses like the other end, we've got open um, rafters we haven't yet insulated. We'll be able to get our fixing through. We just need to try and get it up so we can clamp it in place. And I need to hopefully pull back our membrane so I can see where I'm fixing through to. But I've got Craig here, he's doing some painting up top. Hopefully between the two of us we can get it up. That means we can finish off the battens, finish off the membrane get close to roofing tomorrow. All right, so next morning, we're gonna get this ladder in first. So we've got it here, we've peeled back the membrane and we're gonna fix it from the other side because obviously we've got access there, but we're gonna get it all lined up and clamped for it. If worse comes to worse, it'll hang along your end, which is fine. It's just, we get clamped on that just for now. Finally at the point now where we can get these fascia boards up. We've done all the prep, so we've blocked out the ends of these rafters so that they're all nice and level. We had string lines everywhere, making sure it's all nice and straight. And this is what the boards are looking now, like now. Craig painted yesterday. 
What we've done is like a matte black stain. They still need to dry a little bit. I wanted to make sure that we paint the back just so we've got one coat on there. And then we'll paint the front once it's up and we've done any cuts we need to. These are um, proper fascia boards. They're grooved. They're also treated, uh, but they are grooved to accept a soffit. We're probably not going to use that in quite the same way, but we've got the option there if we wanted to. So first things first, we're going to take them around, make sure that we've got the best ones. That's not the best ones. It's got a hole in it. What we're doing for the first fixings, we might change our mind and put a few screws in after, but I had some stainless steel nails from the, uh, from the nail gun. I'm just taking one off at a time and tapping them in. They're not splitting it, which is good, but it just means that we can get everything right and then we'll come back in. And where we've got that extra blocking down the other end, we can probably pile it and screw those just in case to make sure nothing splits. This end we're going into the rafters, so fairly straightforward. We're now switched over to the trusses down the far end and those are the ones that we've put a packer on the side and we'll pull it in tighter but there's a scarf join about halfway along there just so it's mitered hopefully that'll just mean that if the timber shrinks and swells it's a little bit more forgiving there Right, we're having a bit of a late night go at it. Everyone's left, but uh, I'm going to crack on just for uh, a one time only performance. I'm going to uh, do a late one. I'm going to get the facial boards painted. So they're all up now. I've gone along, nailed everything off, just did it all by hand. Stainless steel nails, three, and we should be good. So the reason for not cracking on and getting on with uh, putting the starter trays, the eaves carrier felt tray thingies, or getting the roof on at all is because getting up and painting underneath that is a bit of a pain. So I'm going to get this side painted. Well, there we go, it is done. Oh, I thought that was going to be easier. We're using a matte wood stain. So we kind of wanted the wood grain to show and it soaks in nicely and it's pretty forgiving. So that way you don't have to worry about the knots showing through and equally we've just nailed it and painted straight over and they kind of blend away which is good because I'm, uh, I'm not going for the high finish Victorian roof line that we did at the old house. We'll definitely get another coat on here, but what I wanted to do is make sure that we painted right to the top. UPVC would certainly have been straighter and less deviation and, you know, it would have just been easier, but I think it's a nice finish. Bearing in mind that all the walls are going to be clad in a timber of some sort, it makes sense to carry that all the way up rather than have you a, a metal black roof upvc fascia and then cladding and hope they will tie in i think keeping it timber to the top is the uh, the way to go i'd love to just carry on and get the other fascia done but i think i might burn out if i carry on this early in the week so this is how we're looking on this side i mean i could just run along actually from up here carefully because what we need to do is just the top Actually, I've still got to nail this one. What I'll do is I'll make this the priority first thing in the morning. Coat of paint, get the last few nails in. We're also short of the trays at the bottom, I think. This is the dodgy board. It does have a hole there, but we can fill that if needs be. It's one of the biggest asked questions, and we I thought we touched on it in the Q&A video, but maybe we didn't. And the question was, where are we going to put the cabin? Because we've made it so we can move it. And the, uh, the honest truth of that is we're not 100% certain. Ideally, we would like it just down on the flat section there where the pigs used to be. 
next to that side of the barn. Obviously when we come to do the barn conversion, we need to leave an allowable space between this and that for getting access. And the main reason for that is the views. You know, it would be open and views on all three sides. But being where it is, it doesn't have that. It's also a lot of effort to move it. And if you look at the height of the window sills, which is that batten there, plus the actual thickness of the frame, it's not too much lower than the edge of this concrete wall. So in theory, we could lift off two concrete sleepers and pretty much once this is trimmed down, be it almost sill height looking out. Obviously the patio door would open up on a concrete wall and one end of the building would look at that way as well, but it might be worthwhile considering that. We've also got everything we need there as far as utilities um, and the septic system could be put by that or we could even get an above ground one if needs be. Anyway, that's uh, another debate for another day. We've still got a couple of months before we need to decide that. Things I've skipped on and done are getting the roof ladders done. So we've now got this overhang. 300 millimetres, not a huge overhang, but enough to, you know, match the front. We've also decided, rightly or wrongly, that rather than having a flat level soffit, which is the norm, we're going to go with an angled soffit and follow the, the, the pitch of the rafters underneath. I looked at a bunch of log cabins in person the other day, and, um, and they all seem to do it that way, and it didn't look bad. We're not going to light or anything underneath there, so I don't need to keep it level. Plus it means we don't have to do that boxed in section at the end. So possibly me being lazy, but possibly the sensible way to go. Thank you everyone for watching this series and all your comments and support during it, especially Speedy for sponsoring the series. We're gonna leave it there and get on with this roof before it starts raining. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. We'll see you next time.